On this episode of Lark Chats, I'll be interviewing Dwarf. At the time of this recording, they played out of Talonor at Belgarth Group in Bremington, Washington. For the first time on Lark Chats, we'll be interviewing a Belgarth player, and we'll be discussing the Belgarth community through their experiences. You'll hear about Dwarf joining Belgarth just as it was opening up after COVID, and how that led to his traveling throughout the Belgarth Pacific Northwest scene and beyond. We discuss how the community has affected him, and how, in return, he has made an impact on the community. Please consider hitting the like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more LARP content. You can also consider supporting me on Patreon, link in the description below. And now on to the episode. Hello, and welcome to LARP Chats. Uh, today we have Dwarf. Uh, he's our first Belgarth player. Uh, we'll be talking about the Belgarth uh, community. So how would you describe the Belgarth community to someone who's never experienced it? It's a great question. You know, it's it's a family, first and foremost. Like the day you step onto the field for the first time there's always somebody there who's really kind smiles at you greets you and it says welcome you know and it is a supremely welcoming environment for anyone there's so many different walks of life here in Belagarth, and every single person is celebrated and it's a fantastic community to be a part of when you enter the community uh how are you welcomed oh first of all how long have you been in the Belagarth community I've been in the Bellagarth community for about two and a half years now. Uh, so April 2022 was the first day I walked onto my local realm, uh, realms field. So how did they welcome you when you first arrived? Actually, it was kind of like a welcoming out of COVID. So everyone was welcome. And it was just a big, uh, a big deal. It was like the realm was opening. So we were really all there to welcome the realm, essentially. I had veterans that came up to me and just made sure I knew the rules. I was playing right. I was comfortable. And exactly that, super welcoming welcoming environment uh had a lot of fun thinking back to that first day how long do you think you played did you was it a full day of just oh. exper like experiencing the 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 breath of Belgarth, or is it just kind of like dipping your toes in i think when i came out i was ready and i was like full send so i think i was there for the full practice so we started at about noon i think we went to about four or five can you share a story that to you encapsulates uh the spirit of the community in your experience? Fail learn this. There's so many. Uh, this question. Oh, there's so many good ones, but I have to tell the story about my recent uh, eventing experience at Phoenix Rising, which was in King Set City, California. And I was doing a security shift. So I was doing about four hours of just walking around and like making sure the nightlife folk were doing good things, you know, um, all vibing well being safe. That meant I was still a part of the action, though. I was still taking part, wasn't getting inebriated or anything, but for the best, I usually don't. There was so much going on at Phoenix Rising where I got involved in a Jenga Tower game with Oreos, and we were just stacking Oreos, and the game got like super crazy. There was this young kid who was just like, hey, I've got this whole package of stuff double stuffed oreos and i don't want to eat them all so you're gonna help me and i'm like okay and then there was like me and cyprus and um a few other people got involved and we're just like all right what's the game and he takes like a little like empty plastic shot glass uh sets it like narrow end up and he's like we're gonna play jenga with these oreos and whoever makes the stack fall eats the entire stack. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> all right, I'm here for this degeneracy. I'm just like, whatever, who, who, who cares? We'll have fun. So we play this game and it actually goes, I have a picture of the Jenga stack. It was huge. It was like a sleeve and a half of the package was this Jenga stack of Oreos. And it just got more intense with everybody else doing it because there were so many people like kind of like flocking in being like, oh yeah, I want this Oreo. No, you got to put it on the stack. What? Oh, that's what we're doing? Crazy. And like <laughs> basically the entire event ended up taking part of this even if like there were only like five original players or whatever but like everyone was just kind of like oh what's going on here oh okay we're you know doing the thing all right and in the background though i have to mention also there's guys in um like some of our guys are just wearing those pink like suits or whatever where it's like the big slender man costumes i don't know how else to describe them but they're just all pink and they're giving out hot dogs straight from their belt flag pockets <laughs> and i'm like this is like the most bizarre nightlife experience i've ever had but this is the community coming together to do all these bizarre things at once and we're all here for it so that was just a super great night super weird like i said but it was super belagarth <laughs> oh yeah yeah you say that's belagarth why is that belagarth why is that belagarth if you can um oh i can absolutely okay. so 
Bellegarth is where, like, you know, the community is so unapologetically themselves. We're weird and we don't pretend to be anything different. Oh, and that's, I think, the best way I can encapsulate that. Well, good story. So in your experience, how does the community handle conflicts between members in the group? Honestly, I think Bellegarth needs a little bit more um, work sometimes on their conflict resolutions, but I think it's because it's a completely individual circumstance, right? Because, you know, when confrontations happen on the field, it's really just an A-B kind of thing, and it's kind of like, what are their dispositions and personality types, and what is the Herald's also personality type in dealing with these conflicts? And that can vary so much. I don't feel like there is a standardized way to do conflict resolution at this point yet in our community. But nine times out of 10, everything's resolved by just clear, concise communication. People might get a little like agitated, like, oh, where did that shot land? Like, you know, and it's just like, hey, buddy, like, you know, this came here. Everything's good. Um, and we kind of move on about our day. So I guess like it really does depend, at least on our, our sport, as far as our sport goes. Um, and communicating with each other. It's all really individual, I find. And it could use like a lot of trust and understanding sometimes to reach that resolution, which again, needs work, but I think we're getting there. Continuing with that question, how did you deal with conflict at the realm level? The realm level. We have conflicting personalities. We don't necessarily have like conflict though, I would say. So I've always treated every situation just with grace and with direct, clear communication, no matter what that is, whether that's on or off the field. You know, you just have to let people know, like, hey, this is the issue that I'm experiencing. How can we help resolve this, you know, or come to a conclusion about this? And most people are very understanding, uh, at least in my neck of the woods where I come from. Well, that's good. It's not a 100% for everywhere. Right? No, definitely not. We have really, uh, thankfully, very non-conflictive per personalities in the Emerald Coast where I come from up in Washington. So we're all pretty, we're all pretty passive, honestly. We all just go with the flow. Uh, we just want to be there to have fun and have fun with each other. That's good to help a community. Absolutely. So you've been playing for about two and a half years, you said. Um, How has the community changed in the last two and a half years? If at all. Wow. So what I can say about this, because the community hasn't, I always see like little bits of change here and there and everything's heading in a really great direction and really recovering um, from, I think, a little bit of a dodgy past from before I entered. So before COVID, um, there were a lot more rough and tumble kind of individuals that did cause problems in our community. And it sounds like we've since gotten rid of them. And that's what I always, you know, I say to anyone who's involved in peerage or involved in any capacity with war council or leadership that Bellegarth has done a really good job taking out the trash and really making our sport a safe and fun community for everyone. Well, that's that's good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I know other organizations that I've uh, interviewed have had similar stories where back in the day, it was like just kind of the wild west of uh, yeah. punishments. That's, and, uh, that's all I hear about. And I'm like, I've never encountered that once. And it's such a blessing. Yeah, that's great. So what impact has the community had on you outside of Bellegarth? Oh my goodness. For the importance that Bellegarth has in my life, like pretty much a lot of my life revolves around Bellegarth, but anything that Bellegarth doesn't touch in my life, like my home life, right? My work life. I have so much balance and so many more tools in my own communicational like way of dealing with things and dealing with my own uh, self-regulation, you know, I like to call it. I have so many more tools now to go about life and just be happy, be communicative, be, you know, warm and welcoming to everything and every situation that comes across my path. And it's given me like I said, a lot of ability to be able to handle things that I wasn't necessarily good at in the past. So you said you, you er, learned some tools from dealing with uh, the Bellegarth community. Can you give an example of some of the tools that you've used in your real life that uh, you had learned from Bellegarth? I sure can. Like I said, self-regulation is like a big one. I used to be like really anxious and just really, uh, I want to say like just busy all the time. And I would take things from zero to a hundred really quick. 
Um, I don't do a whole lot of that anymore. Everything's kind of, I sit, stay at the same level. I greet everything, you know, uh, every situation that comes with just that same level-headedness and grace that I would expect from anyone else. It is very like, like just more even playing field when I think about a lot of the things that I deal with, you know, just something frustrates me. Oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal, you know? Has there been a moment in your experience with Belgarth that really strengthened your bond with the community? Wow, that, that is a really great question. I don't have a specific instance in mind, but I think what I can say about this uh, question is that every time I come to a place, whether it's a new event that I haven't been to yet, or whether it's, you know, one that I have been to, I can always rely on the same bunch of people to be there, right? And every single time that I enter a space, I feel welcome. I am welcomed with so much warmth, like, oh my God, there's Dwarf. Like, we're so happy to see you. Thank you so much for coming out all this way or this way, you know, wherever I am. And every time that I'm greeted by somebody in our in our community, I just, I just have that, like that heartstring pull, like this is where I belong. Hmm. And that's really important to me. So just being welcomed every time you're uh, welcoming into the community, every time you go, Absolutely. it strengthens the bond just by being there. Yes, exactly. That's pretty powerful. It is. It's extremely powerful. You've done a lot for the community in your two and a half years. How do you see your contributions to the community? Oh, gosh. No, don't perceive me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't perceive myself. What? That's crazy. No, I think that's a really good question. I think my contributions have been, wow, you know, I don't even know where to start. There's so many things that flood into my head when you ask that because everything I've ever contributed to this community is because I entered this community, felt instantly welcomed, and I wanted to protect and serve this community for forever. And I got like involved, like, how do I do more? I got involved with realm leadership. Um, I helped fix some things like in my realm, in my realm area. And then I, you know, made a big time, like, or say big time. It's, <laughs> you know, it Trials of the Pacific Main has gotten a lot more traction than I ever expected. And opening that space into my community has only developed that community and brought people from all over into our space, uh, where Washington wasn't really a traveled Belagarth region all too much. So definitely what I see is that I've kind of like bridged that gap between, you know, no man's land, Washington, and now all of the rest of Belagarth. And it's still a process. You know, everything is a work in progress. Everything, everybody else in Washington, you know, I hope is inspired to go to more events. I see a little bit more people going to events and starting to uh, take part in things and participate. It needs a little bit of work, but because I think of my contribution to my local community, I can definitely say that a lot more people in Washington partake with B Bellagarth as a whole and not just Washington Bellagarth. That's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, that's that's Thank a you. regional thing. Yeah, um, definitely. So in your experience, and I'm going off on a little tangent, would you say that a lot of what you've done is facilitating communication? Absolutely. Um, Networking is huge to me. Um, how do you think that has impacted uh, your service? I think um, it all started when I just, I hit a bunch of events and I got in touch with a lot of people and a lot of people... You know, um, I got invested with the community, the community got invested in me, and I think that communication and that networking has helped huge, uh, very largely for then my success with Trials of the Pacific Main and Washington as a whole, because now Washington's essentially a part of that network. Yeah, you were telling me, um, like, when you first started, you traveled more than a lot of people would probably right. travel in the first year or two. <laughs> uh, can you just kind of like, do a quick rundown list of kind of like some of the locations that you hit in your first year. Oh, Just absolutely. Just so people understand the, the breadth of your communication efforts that you've Yeah, gone I mean, into. all adjoining states in Washington, uh, to Washington, I should say. So that's Oregon um, through Western Wars, California through Bifter, uh, Battle for the Ring, for those not familiar. 
I, I hit a lot of Idaho events. So Chaos War, or not Chaos War is my first year, but a lot of um, other, I guess at the time, since we were coming out of COVID, there were a lot of different Idaho events that had popped up. So mm -hmm. I hit a lot of those. I hit um, a new Montana event, War of the North. I can't say this was in my first year, but I did get like um, networked with uh, Las Vegas through Fool's Raid. Um, so really, basically the entire West Coast, I've kind of been traveling around and just, you know, having fun and getting to meet everyone, like I said, in the entire encompassing Bellagarth community. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty big. Um, yeah, there's a lot of travel. Yeah, yeah, I think 10 events the first year, I think I hit 11 this year. So that is it's, it's a lot, um, definitely. And it's the list is always growing. And I'm always like, Oh, no, I don't know if I can do any more than like 10 events this year. What do I do? You know, just so. wait until you start cross gaming. I know. And that's the thing, too. I have to start cross game or not that I have to, but I want to start cross gaming um, with uh, like the Northern Lights uh, Kingdom uh, next year and start doing a lot of things in my local region and start, you know, doing a lot of that. And I think that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of events and there's only so many weekends is what I learned this year. And it's really unfortunate, but it's a it's a challenge that I'm willing to accept and take on. Well, if you end up going to one of the the campouts up in Washington, let me know and I'll help facilitate and in introduce you to people and stuff. That would be great. So. I would love that. So what kind of challenges do you see the community facing and how do you think that they can overcome them in the future? I think a lot of my focus uh, this year and a lot of my challenges this year uh, was scheduling events uh, between event coordinators to kind of um, utilize the best portions of each region's geographical climate and obviously where they fit in on the calendar. Um, we got super congested in a few different por parts of this year and then all of July there was like nothing going on. So it was like, oh wow, it would have been nice if something was over here that would have been able to accommodate it because then there was also a, just a little bit of conflict i guess between trials of the pacific main and like uh two different montana events and i had gone to one of them and montana was like super hot <laughs> like <laughs> nothing on montana the first war of the north i was mentioning so their first event was in may and they moved to august and it was like super hot there and i was just like I, I just died. I melted basically. And I was like, oh, we could have done better to help each other schedule these things and take each other's strengths and weaknesses geographically into consideration when planning these events. I mean, Chaos Wars did an excellent job this year, I think, because they moved from, I think, middle of July to late June. And that was a super great move for them. It wasn't as hot. There weren't as many bugs. It was super enjoyable. But then that made everybody else shift like, oh, no, like panic mode. Where are we going? Where's our where's our calendar re real estate? Right. So we can definitely probably recover a little bit better next year and hopefully talk more between event coordinators to kind of say like, oh, hey, you know, I'm thinking about this or I'm thinking about that. Or in trials case, like I kind of already have a date set and hopefully other people are amenable in taking that into consideration a little bit more this year. So to facilitate the communication, how do you, how would you go about overcoming that, the issue of not communicating? So thankfully there is actually a discord that is set up for event okay. coordinators or people in, interested in event coordinating. Um, I can definitely even give you that link. Um, I'd be curious. Yeah. Um, and that was definitely something that was actually set up before the year started. Um, it was, I think around like when everyone was having like openers, that discord was set up by Toddlin of Stygia. So in Montana, actually then funny enough. Um, and that has been a really good resource that people are underutilizing right now, but hopefully since it is a resource that we have, we can communicate it better and uh, just start to work together. Nice. I'm glad it's uh, started. Hopefully that will Absolutely. help for next year. Yeah, I hope it's a tool we all utilize. I think that would be great. In the future, how do you see the community evolving throughout the years? That's a good question. You know, I think we really, we do really well. And there are definitely improvements, uh, maybe with communication. I think a lot of the things uh, stems back to communication as far as I'm aware. But as a community, I think we're doing really well. We're always changing as we should. Um, but right now, I think just uh, better lines of communication between each other, different things that we're doing, 
being good to each other on the field. Those are all things that we can all strive for. A lot of LARPs have uh, tr their own traditions and Belgarth has their own traditions. So are there any traditions that you hope to see continue or maybe any traditions you hope to see discontinue throughout the years of your time in Belgarth? That's really such a good question. That's such a large picture question. Yeah. And that's why it's like, whoa, I really just have to say really quick that I love the, um, the a lot of people don't like this quote, but like me being former Navy um, and in the military and probably the most traditional, like traditional military branches, uh, tradition is just peer pressure set by dead people. Mm -hmm. um, so anything about tradition, you know, I think can be welcome to be thrown out if it doesn't serve us. There are traditions that are great. Squires wearing white tabards. I'm not wearing mine currently, um, but that is a good tradition, right? We, I was actually just talking with Sir Parr about that um, just last night. And it's, that's your Home Depot apron is what he says. <laughs> and I'm like, I really, I love that because, you know, you can see somebody who is a prospective peer wanting to help others and see them from across the field. That guy's wearing white. That guy has a knight symbol, even if you don't know whose symbol it is at the time, but that guy's wearing a symbol on his chest, wearing white. Uh, I should approach that person and ask for help with anything I might be going through or struggling with. So that's a good tradition, I think. Bad tradition, or at least a a tradition that doesn't serve us. There is a like a saying, if it's like, if they're not taking your shots, hit them harder. Mm. And I think that's, it's better to communicate it than, and that is a communication in, in its own sense, but I don't think aggression, meeting aggression is or at least that hyper aggression, I think that leads to our blowouts on the field. Like, hey, yeah. man, why are you hitting me so hard? Hey, man, what's going on? Like, why are you, you know, pulling an attitude with me through all these shots? And it's like, no, let's just communicate. Like, hey, did you feel that shot? Oh, no, that was actually like the tip end of my board, of blah, blah, blah. You probably just didn't see it. And it's all about perspective, right? Yeah. Uh, it's about perspective and good honor. And we have to trust each other to have good honor on the field. And definitely, like, I think the old, way of like, yeah, just hit them harder if they're not taking your shots. I don't think that's very helpful for certain cases and for a lot of cases, actually. I completely agree. That is a commonality in other LARPs as well. They yeah, also of have course, I'm the, sure. that saying. <laughs> sure. I'd also like to see go away. Yeah. So I'd like to thank Dwarf for coming on, our first Belgarth player for LARP Chats. Thank you for having me. Yes. Appreciate it. Uh, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>